Steve Kerr has praised the defense, but says the offense can be better, Ross. How do you think this Warriors offense can and needs to be better in game three? You know, that's the key right there. You know, anytime you talk about Warriors offense, it always starts usually from the defensive end. That's what's the catalyst to them getting out and doing what they want to do, getting stops, getting defensive boards, finishing with that, and getting getting out in the open court. And that way they can play with some pace, some tempo, um, get some free space for their, their top shooters and Stephen Curry and Clay Thompson, um, and really make the defense react. So I actually do think defense continues to be the key to their offense being successful. Um, um, you, we, we've seen some really impressive performances in game two from Draymond Green with his offense and him hitting five threes and Sean Livingston played hero in game one. You're still waiting to see maybe that marquee game in this series from a Clay Thompson or a Stephen Curry. but. Maybe the Warriors don't need to do that. I remember one time speaking with Jaron Collins, and he said he felt one of the keys to the Warriors' long run last year in playoffs was that they leaned on their depth. And that's what the Warriors are doing right now. It does, you may not have to see a one-man show. It could continue to be all of the players chipping in. Well, it would be poetic, and maybe the defensive uh, thing that exemplifies that is all the different people they throw at LeBron James, the success they've had against him. Why has this Warriors defense been successful again against LeBron James so far? Well, it starts out as a team effort. Um, first of all, the Warriors' commitment to getting back in transition defense and identifying shooters and taking away easy open threes um, from this team, uh, first of all, takes away some of their momentum. They're not playing with the wind on their back. They're playing uphill. And then the lack of threes uh, doesn't allow the court to be stretched out. It makes it tighter. And then from there, that's a lot of extra pressure now on LeBron James to have to figure things out. And a lot of his points in this playoffs have been at the rim, going to the basket. Um, um, well, Andrew Bogut, hello, game two, five blocks, you know, he's really disruptive around the rim. He blocked LeBron. Um, and then on top of that, the individual players that they're putting in rotation on LeBron have done a nice job, and they're all vastly different looks. You know, you have Harrison Barnes with his strength, who's going to stay closer to LeBron. You have Andre Iguodala, who has precise, strong, quick hands, making plays on the ball, and then he's long, and, and he has quickness to him, so he can give LeBron a little bit of space and beat him to spot. Um, now you have different looks with the length of Sean Livingston and Clay Thompson, you know, being dedicated, getting a couple of steals on him. And then one thing Andre Iguodala said when you're defending LeBron James, or he even pointed out a Kevin Durant, these types of great players, you see one guy on him, but it's never that. He has many players talking to him, letting him know what side to shade him to. It's a team commitment, communication, and helping everyone defend this top player in LeBron James. See, I, I knew a tough-nosed defender like you, Roz, would love the bulky performance on defense, particularly early in game two, maybe more than anything else that we've seen. So what has that defense meant to this team, particularly in this series? For the Warriors? Yes. Yeah, oh, the defense of the Warriors has been crucial. It's been critical. I mean, uh, Steve Kerr, as you said, pointed out that they could even be better on offense, but the defense has held this team that you know we thought would be maybe a match of run and gun. Who could play better small ball? Who's going to hit more threes? Is this going to be a series where you have to score over 110 points? Well, the Cavs scored 77 points in game two. They've been held below double-digit threes in both games. In fact, game two, they only hit five threes. I mean, they've completely obliterated the new identity that the Cavs have created for themselves under Coach Lou. So they've just, I mean, it's to the point where, you know, if, if the Cavs may be looking to make a desperation move maybe in game three, maybe they decide to go big, which would really show, you know, it's a complete strategy change from everything they've been about and been able to execute to this point in, to the NBA Finals. And Timofey Mazgat did have some good games against them in the Finals. We didn't see him until very late in game two. All right, you were there. You know what the energy was like in that Oklahoma City series, what it was like in game six, and the Warriors overcame it. Do you think that experience prepares them for what they'll see game three in Cleveland. Absolutely. Everything about that OKC series prepares uh, the Warriors for what's happening with the Cavs. You know, in fact, you've seen a lot of different personalities in the media, whatever, and, and myself even feel like, gosh, after that OKC series, that might have been the real test. Now against, you know, the Cavs, it's a team they're familiar with, it's a team they possibly match up better with, and um, this is a, it's a, that test of having to come back from going down 3-1 and a completely loud 
crazy uh, hostile environment in OKC, having to play there, um, it certainly prepares them for having to go into the gym now uh, at Quicken Loans Arena in Cleveland and handle their hostile crowd as well. So I think this is, OKC was a great test for the Warriors and may have even over prepared them for the Cavs. Well, it's a great point because it felt like at times OKC might have had even more urgency than the Warriors, if not at least matched it in the biggest moments. It hasn't felt that way in this series quite yet. Can Cleveland, in your mind, match the Warriors' urgency uh, in Game 3? They better. <laughs> they have to. I mean, their backs are against the walls. Um, I mean, it's still, it's 2-0, but... These have been some really dominant wins that the Warriors have had. And, uh, you know, I think game three is really important, too, because perhaps the Warriors are coming in there thinking if they can crush them and, and the Cavs spirit in game three, you know, that, that's a series they can wrap up right there in Cleveland. Um, but they'd have to match the urgency. And the thing is, is the Warriors have urgency, too. Um, after having gone down 3-1 and beating OKC, Stephen Curry actually said, we now have to address game one of the NBA Finals like it's game seven, like we're down 3-1. So I think they actually came into this series with an added sense of, let's not play around. And then after game two, actually, Andrew Bogut said, I think this win is more dangerous for us than it is the Cavs. It was such a big blowout game, too. He said, we can't relax. We haven't done anything yet. So I think the Warriors understand what's at play, and the guys are really locked in.